What I'd like to uh, discuss with you is the rationale for our studies of stem cell implants to repair damaged heart muscle. Uh, the results of two clinical trials which we conducted, one using cardiac derived stem cells, and we did that in collaboration with Cedar sinai Medical Center and Dr. Marban, and the second study using mesenchymal stem cells or MSCs, and we did that in collaboration with the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine and Dr. Joshua Hare. And then I'd like to talk to you about uh, some of the challenges we face in using this uh, hopeful treatment and how we're trying to address some of those challenges. So heart muscle dysfunction, or left ventricular dysfunction, is the final common pathway for most forms of cardiovascular disease. Most commonly from coronary artery disease, resulting in angina or myocardial infarction. But also heart valve disease, can cause heart muscle dysfunction and high blood pressure, and also idiopathic disease. So some patients develop left ventricular dysfunction for no obvious discernible reason. The clinical correlate of heart muscle dysfunction is congestive heart failure, which is increasing in incidence and prevalence in the United States. There are now about 6 million individuals with heart failure and about 500,000 new individuals each year. Heart failure is associated with uh, shortened survival. There's about a 50% mortality over five years. Frequent and repeated hospitalizations for patients. Uh, dyspnea, shortness of breath, uh, fatigue, uh, and volume overload with uh, swelling and shortness of breath. The body's intrinsic response to low cardiac output or congestive heart failure is an increase in sympathetic stimulation, which increases the heart rate and increases the force of contraction to try to improve cardiac output, and also an increase in what we call the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and that leads to an increase in blood pressure and also salt retention. And although these responses are initially compensatory, they're eventually self-defeating. And many of our drugs try to decrease these responses to try to improve quality of life and survival. So our current treatment options are limited. They are to prevent new damage to the heart muscle with uh, bypass surgery or angioplasty giving diuretics to try to improve uh, salt excretion and volume excretion, try to decrease the workload of the heart with uh, beta blockers, try to block uh, neurohumeral stimuli, like from the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and then uh, transplantation and mechanical devices like left ventricular assist devices but these, uh, in the instance of transplantation, only a few thousand each year in the United States, and mechanical devices are uh, very expensive. And none of these really address the primary problem, which is the uh, loss of living, working heart muscle. So the traditional teaching has been what I learned in medical school was that all the heart cells we had were terminally differentiated. And those are the ones we were born with, and we won't have any others. And some of the only responses to injury, for example, injury from a heart attack, would be for the individual cell to increase in size, or cell hypertrophy, for the cells to slip and result in heart dilatation, or for scar formation, which is the default. So if you can't uh, generate new tissue, then the default is a scar from fibroblast. Now, I think um, the landmark study, which showed that uh, this traditional dogma and teaching may not be entirely correct, uh, was this article in the uh, New England Journal. And what they did was looked at female hearts XX chromosomes, which are tra transplanted into males. And uh, when, if, if they died and they did an autopsy, they found Y chromosome 
and other markers in the heart muscle cells and coronary arteries that had the cells which had the Y chromosome, even though it was a female heart that was transplanted into the man. So the only way that a Y chromosome could get into a heart muscle cell would be that uh, new heart muscle cells were being made from uh, the male bone marrow. So we now know that there are really uh, several sources of stem cells. Endothelial uh, precursor cells, mesenchymal stem cells, satellite cells from skeletal muscle. Adipose tissue can also be a source of mesenchymal stem cells. There are embryonic stem cells, and there are also stem cells in the heart. So we think that probably most organs have a small niche of stem cells. Now our uh, focus has been two, uh, mesenchymal stem cells from the uh, bone marrow, and also cardiosphere-derived stem cells from the heart. <coughs> so for the cardiosphere-derived cells, what we do is take a biopsy uh, of the heart, and uh, these explants then uh, shed cardiosphere-forming cells, which are then replated, and then uh, derive from these cardiosphere-derived cells. And it takes about four to six weeks to grow up a sufficient number of cells to uh, give them back to, and then inject them into the patient. So this uh, trial, one of our trials, is called the Caduceus trial. And this was a phase one slash two randomized prospective control study, and we did that in conjunction with Cedar sinai Medical Center. All the patients had an acute myocardial infarction. They had significant uh, left ventricular dysfunction after the infarct. And we assess left ventricular function commonly by looking at the ejection fraction, which is normally 60 to 65 percent, and these uh, patients all had a 25 to 45 percent ejection fraction. We infused the cardiosphere-derived cells in the, in, in the coronary artery, which had sustained the infarct. And that was compared with optimal medical therapy. The uh, FDA did not allow us to do a true placebo-controlled study, but it was a randomized study. And the primary outcome was safety. And the secondary outcomes were uh, efficacy in terms of scar size, did it decrease in size, the size of the chamber, and left ventricular function. And we made all of these assessments using a gadolinium-enhanced uh, magnetic resonance imaging. So in the patients randomized uh, to receive the cardiosphere-derived cells, they had the myocardial infarction. We did the biopsy for four weeks, and then took four to six weeks to culture the cells to sufficient number in order to uh, inject them, and at that time we did a baseline MRI and did the infusion, and then uh, we repeated the MRI at six months and at 12 months. We did uh, two dose strata, uh, 12 and a half million, some patients got 12 and a half million, and then 25 million subsequently in, in a second group of patients. So this is how we looked at uh, scar size. Um, baseline and at six months. This is a patient and this white area here is the scar and that is decreased in this patient which received the cardiosphere derived uh, stem cells and in the control the scar is here and, and now here so it's actually increased in the uh, control patient. And these results were reported in the Lancet uh, last year. And the sum data here showing a significant decrease in scar size at six months and at 12 months in the patients who receive the stem cells, but no significant change in the control patients. Now in terms of function and remodeling, uh, again we can look at uh, function by looking at uh, regional strain here, which uh, showed a significant uh, improvement in the CDC animals and some change in the control animals, but the improvement was better in the group which received the stem cells. And then the thickening of the uh, wall was also significantly greater in the stem cell treated group. 
In terms of left ventricular volumes, uh, there was no significant difference between the control group and the uh, stem cell group. There was some improvement, a trend toward improvement in the stem cell group with a decrease in volume, so less left ventricular dilatation. And the second uh, important study we did was called the Poseidon trial. And this also was a phase one, two randomized prospective control study. And we did that with uh, the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. It was the same group of patients, um, but they uh, did not have a recent infarct. They had a long-standing ischemic left ventricular dysfunction. And they were randomized to two groups of stem cells, one autologous cells from the patient, and the other allogeneic cells from a donor. And here we use mesenchymal stem cells, not cardiac-derived stem cells. We did three-dose strata, uh, 10, but I'm sorry, 20, 100, and 200 million cells. And again, the primary outcome was safety in these phase one, two studies. In this um, protocol, we did not inject the cells in the coronary artery. We injected them directly into the wall of the heart in the border zone area between the scar and the good tissue. And we used a device which actually uh, screwed, uh, we were able to screw into the uh, heart muscle and then inject the cells and then uh, remove the uh, device. So both the allogeneic and the autologous cells were safe and well tolerated. And there was no significant difference between the two cell types in terms of its, their effects on left ventricular function as assessed by ejection fraction, infarct size as assessed by gadolinium enhanced to MRI, or left ventricular remodeling as assessed by end diastolic and end systolic volumes. So we conclude that clinical studies of bone marrow and cardiac derived stem cells are safe but the beneficial effects are modest to date. And this is really true of um, the vast majority of uh, stem cells for cardiac repair to now. So our challenges and opportunities, the same Chinese symbol, how can the modest effect of stem cell therapy for the heart be improved upon? So we have several questions. Where should we get the cells? Should the cells come from the patient? or should the cells come from a donor? If they're from the patient, we call that autologous cells, and the advantage here is that there's no immune response, and it's a perfect match. The disadvantages are the host factor. So stem cells seem, appear to be less functional with increasing age, and most of our patients are middle-aged or older. Also, uh, many patients have disease, so we don't know whether stem cells from a 75-year-old individual with diabetes may be as functional as stem cells from a 20-year-old uh, healthy individual. Uh, another disadvantage of autologous cells is it requires harvesting uh, from the patient, and that's associated with risk. It's also associated with uh, an isolation of the cells and expanding them which takes time and which is expensive. So we have to wait four to six weeks typically, whereas we might want to give the cells more acutely in someone who has had a recent uh, heart attack. So there is uh, significant evidence, in fact, that there is age-related impairment in the number, I'm sorry, in terms of the number of stem cells in terms of um, the activity of the stem cells, and in terms of their ability to uh, inhibit atherosclerosis. So the stem cell function does seem to be uh, diminished with increasing age. 